Hello and welcome to theCUBE's coverage of Supercomputing 24, where we're live on the floor in Atlanta with even more coverage coming from the Cube studios where I'm at. SC24 is now more than just about supercomputing for HPC, but also AI infrastructure is taking really a, a central theme of the situation down there in Atlanta. And with that, I really want to dive into a discussion about how organizations need to evolve their data strategies to build these new AI-enabled applications. Right now, I'm joined by Scott Bills, who's the VP of Professional Services at Dell Technologies. Welcome on board, Scott. I, I, again, both of us, you know, we're just in Austin having these conversations about how AI is transforming things and how AI is really fed by data. So I'm glad to have you on board. Yeah, glad to be here. Excited to, to talk about data, which you know, is viewed as a critical issue enabler to driving value from, uh, from Gen AI. So yeah. excited, to, excited to talk about it. Yeah, I, I, I agree. And I, I think you know, when you start to look at how organizations can effectively manage massive uh, diverse volumes of AI specific data to reduce complexity and maintain performance. What are some of the things that you're talking to customers about getting that management and really getting a better understanding and handle on that diverse data? Well, it's a critical first step. And um, you know, as we talked about, um, data is the critical driver of getting value from AI and Gen AI. And uh, typically the, the first step in getting that value is to understand uh, what are the data sources that are going to enable that value. Uh, that requires you to kind of A, know what the, the right data sets are, B, where they're at, and C, how you need to think about classifying them um, and, and labeling them. Not every data set, uh, not every file, not every document is going to be uh, appropriate uh, from a sensitivity point of view for every AI use case, uh, every model and uh, need to think through that comprehensively and have a structured approach uh, towards data uh, if you want to scale AI and uh, increase use case throughput in the enterprise. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. And I, I think one of the things that when we look at, you know, the strategies behind this is really ensuring high quality, compliant, governed data that is brought into, you know, AI reliably for being able to do model training and deployment. How are you really helping organizations with that? Because you know, garbage in, garbage out, and really compliance and governance and high quality are kind of the themes there. What are you doing with organizations to help them with that? Really, it's from beginning to end, it's helping them as they're thinking about their use cases and where they're going to get value from AI, um, helping, the, helping them identify, uh, assess the right data sets, helping them to develop a centralized catalog, uh, helping them to classify and uh, group uh, the data uh, according to applicability and, and how and where it can be used. It's helping them then integrate uh, the data into uh, you know, the appropriate use cases and then automate and orchestrate uh, that uh, to ensure that you have the right velocity, uh, including the, the right access to the right data sets to, to support the use cases. But it's really that that you know life cycle view all the way from identifying the data sources, um, classifying, curating, cleansing, and then automating ingestion and scaling. And it's helping provide that end to end platform is is really kind of what we do and what organizations are are going to have to do comprehensively to uh, to enable the AI opportunity. Yeah, and, and I would assume that a big piece of that part of it is really helping. Uh, them, like you said, in the data quality. And I mm -hmm. would assume that customers are saying, hey, we want to reduce our risks and make mm -hmm. sure we're compliant in there as well. Absolutely. So it's, it's kind of understanding kind of the data sets you have, um, you know, doing the, the cleansing, the curation up front, but then also from an automation standpoint, making sure you have kind of pipelines and orchestration set up to ensure that data quality uh, over time and that it's a, a, a scalable model and approach to that issue. Yeah, no, I, I think that's key. And actually it leads me right into the next question, which is really around automated solutions that you can provide to help address these inefficiencies in the traditional data integration process. Because mm -hmm. you're really trying to meet AI systems speed and volume demands. What are you, what are you doing to help organizations really address that part? 
Yeah, it's really, you know, just not just the integration piece, but also leveraging tools, technologies, and platforms to orchestrate kind of data pipelines uh, for different use cases. Uh, different use cases will access different data sets. Incre it's, you know, incredibly important to understand, um, you know, based on the data types, based on the characteristics of the, the model, the LLM, the use case, the type of performance you need, and to ensure that, you know, the, the data throughput, uh, the way you, um, yeah, automated and, and orchestrated that model is going to drive the, the scale, the performance, the responsiveness you need to, to match the outcome and deliver the value. Yeah, and a lot of that has to also be back to the other question was that, you know, the governance aspect of it and tying the, the pipelines and who can see the data and mm -hmm. getting it to the right persona on, on time. Yeah. And it's interesting, that's another in, uh, important part of the data catalog. Uh, you know, we've talked about the importance of classification and having a, you know, broad data governance model. Uh, another important part of a, uh, a catalog is to uh, provide, you know, improved discoverability uh, for folks that are out deploying, defining new use cases in the organization, be able to identify data sources that are going to be the most value to them and improving their ability to identify, uh, access, and, and integrate when uh, for data sources that they may not have been aware of uh, across the enterprise. Yeah, I, I think you hit on another great topic, which is AI-specific data catalogs, you know, mm -hmm. which, which are really needed to enhance data sets and management of those data sets, discoverability and compliance. There, mm -hmm. th that has to also you know, factor into a lot of what organizations are looking to do when they, they, they want to know like something as simple as lineage of mm -hmm. what's going on. Yeah, no, absolutely. Traceability, it gets back to the data quality uh, issues, um, being able to track that, that lineage and who's touched that uh, data. And then kind of the, the metadata as well. Um, you know, as we think about data catalogs, an incredibly important part is uh, metadata about the content um, or the, 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 you know, the file itself, but also the metadata about the content that sits in, um, you know, the, the file or, or the object. And when you think about a comprehensive data catalog, it provides kind of that level of, of detail over and above the, the lineage, but other, you know, critical metadata items that help you um, improve the discoverability and yeah, address the, the governance and compliance uh, issues uh, around data and AI. Yeah, and I, I know you guys are doing stuff at the actual file and object layer to actually expose mm -hmm. that in particular in, in uh, PowerScale to be able to expose that metadata directly right. to the Dell data lake house as well, which is, is you know, again, you know, how do you help people shortcut that? But mm -hmm. one thing I want to dive a little bit deeper into is because we kind of danced around it a little bit is the, the role of AI optimized data pipelines uh, mm -hmm. and what they pl how they play in automating, scaling, and enabling the real time and dynamic, uh, you know, how they empower dynamic AI applications. What are you guys doing to help organizations kind of build the right pi pipelines at the right point and in the right way? Yeah, a lot of it's understanding, you know, based on the, the, the use case requirements, uh, the, the platform requirements they have, uh, what's the, what are the performance levels, what's the throughput they're looking for, you know, time to first token, you think about all the critical elements or, and performance dimensions around uh, LLM and use case performance, ensuring that we have the, or the customer has the right um, tools and orchestra automation orchestration um, in the back end. Uh, to support and hit those metrics, um, not you know, it, it's not a one-size-fits-all approach in terms of pipeline orchestration and, and automation, and understanding kind of the use cases, the performance requirements and dimensions around that is is you know critical uh, to coming up with the right answer, the, the right solution. Um, again, it's not kind of one-size-fits-all. It depends on the use case, the customer, and uh, and what they're looking to drive. Yeah, I, I think that is so critically important because everybody, although they're looking for the, the easy button, uh, you know, especially in data and the data stack nowadays or data platform, it, it's so complicated. And I, mm -hmm. I think there's so many moving parts. Data is in, you know, islands of automation. We used to have islands of automation, now we have silos of data all over the mm -hmm. place. And bringing that together really is one of the things that, you're really focused on, and I, I think you have some services around helping organizations really get their data cataloging and pipeline implemented correctly to streamline that 
uh, integration. Why don't you kind of help us understand some of those, uh, what you're doing in that space as well? Yeah, it's really identifying and standing up, integrating or deploying you know, the, the actual catalog for customers, um, helping them roll up the sleeves and actually um, working with them on the classification, uh, the labeling exercise, helping them think through kind of what's the right framework and how that, should they apply it and how should they integrate that into their governance processes. Um, for specific use cases, identifying the, uh, the best um, and most appropriate data sources, um, helping to initially curate cleanse of the data for that first run, uh, test run of the model, and then help to build that into the you know, overall kind of orchestration uh, pipelines. Um, so it's really kind of diving in at the at, well, it's two levels. One is you know helping to develop the overall kind of data catalog applicable across multiple use cases, but then on a use case by use case basis, helping to implement um, pipelines, orchestrate, automate, and ensure the data quality around that. The other piece I wanted to mention too is the work we do around the Dell Data Lakehouse, where a lot of customers are leveraging that platform as well as a foundational element of the AI factory. Uh, we bring to bear a lot of our professional services capability to stand up that platform and then help implement some of the capabilities we talked about uh, leveraging third party tools as well. So I, I think it, it, that's key because I think being able to put this all together and really uh, be able to you know, nail it because data is, is the lifeblood of AI makes a lot of sense. From your, your perspective, uh, being at Dell, what really differentiates Dell's AI and data management solutions and the services that you wrap around them. And really, how can that be you know, beneficiary, you know, beneficial to uh, various different industries? Because not every industry is the same and they may say, hey, I, my, my view is I'm a snowflake over here. How, how do you help organizations across industries with the solutions and services you're providing? And why is Dell uniquely you know, positioned for that? Yeah, look, when you take a look, I think 40% of the world's data is stored on Dell uh, storage and, and infrastructure. So we're uniquely positioned to understand the challenges around data management, uh, data engineering, and, and managing data fabrics. So a lot of the differentiation just become, you know, comes from kind of our lineage and strength we have around storage and, and data infrastructure and working with customers, uh, develop, deploy platforms around that to, to optimize. Uh, the outcomes they get from their their data, but a lot of the differentiation is really kind of tied back to to that and the unique set of services we built over time. You know, much earlier than than AI um, to help them. Um, you may recall the the era of kind of big data and data analytics, and then AI and now Gen AI. We've you know provided capabilities across that whole uh, journey we've built over you know, decades and. Uh, um, excited to, to bring those to bear now and helping customers with their AI journey. Like, like we like to say, everything that's old is new again. I, I, you know, <laughs> there, there's, there's nothing ever dies. It, it just it reinvents itself in a different way. And I, like you said, big data. I mean, I, I don't know what's bigger. We're talking exabyte data now and having to deal yeah. with that for AI. Uh, so I, I think again, just, just killer in that way. So, so kind of last word. I, I know. Organizations are always hungry to read more, especially when you know we, we get into the technology just enough here, but people want a deep dive. Where, where should people go to really uh, get a better understanding of what you can offer and how it tied together services and solutions? Yeah, look, we have great content on Dell.com that provides overviews of our newly announced data management services. Would also encourage everyone to go take a look at a blog we published this week in conjunction with our announcement um, by Paul Taylor. Uh, on our services portfolio team uh, that provides a little bit more depth and, and detail uh, around the exciting new uh, services we've launched this week. Yeah, I, I love it, Scott, because having you on, it talks about not just the tech, but it's the people aspect of it, which is so key as well. And I think your services portfolio, helping people get to, get to that level and be able to take it on themselves is just, I, I think, killer. I love the mantra there. So thanks for coming on board and explaining all this today. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Thank you. Enjoy the conversation. And thank you for watching this segment live from the floor of SC24 and the Cube Studios where I'm at. Stay tuned for more SC24 on the Cube, the leader in tech news and analysis.